Hello CNS candidates, today I'll be covering the CNS exam application process. My name is Amy Smith and I am the manager of certification programs for the BCNS and I will be your contact if you have any questions throughout the process. Let's discuss some of the benefits of the CNS. So having the CNS signifies that an individual possesses the knowledge and skills required to perform a set of competencies. It sets the standard for a given discipline and that they have reached the three E's, which we consider education, experience, and examination. We are NCCA accredited, and this is considered the certification of certifications. It evaluates a credentialing program against defined standards and accredits programs that meet those standards. It is both a process and a status. Benefits of accreditation include credibility with regulatory bodies, both state and federal, professionals, public, and insurers, and other stakeholders, it is a trusted third-party verification. It de demonstrates psychometric val validity to the examination. It supports certifi certificates in the profession due to state licensure issues. And it is separation between education and exam. There are two education eligibility requirements for the CNS. First is the degree requirement, which is either a master's of science or doctoral degree in the field of nutrition or a related, like, related field, or a doctoral degree in a field of clinical health care, both from a regionally accredited college or university in the United States or its foreign equivalent. There's also a coursework requirement, which includes 35 semester credit hours of relevant coursework, which we'll go into detail in just a moment. The application materials, which are not listed in any particular order, include the exam application, which is uploaded to the portal by the candidate, the official transcripts from any school that is listed as part of the coursework requirements, and these are going to be emailed by the school to applications at nutritionspecialist.org. Two letters of recommendation, which are emailed by the letter writers to applications at nutritionspecialist.org. And a resume and photo, which are both uploaded to the portal by the candidate. Fees include a $100 application fee. This is paid in the portal at the time of applying. A $300 exam fee, which is also paid in the portal. This can be paid at the same time as the application fee or can be paid after you're approved for the exam. And then a $78 fee, which is paid directly to Prometric for the te upon test center registration. Your SPE documents, which are covered in a separate video, include your supervisor approval application, your CNS Canada SPE report, and supervisor reports that are emailed by the supervisor to the BCNS. You can apply to sit for the exam when you've completed both the degree requirements and the coursework requirement. There is no max time limit to sit for the exam after the completion of the two requirements above. <clears throat> you can begin supervised practice experience anytime after you are matriculated in the qualifying degree program, but you may also begin anytime after graduation. SPE hours must be completed, documented, and submitted no later than five years after passing the CNS exam. So let's take a deep dive into the coursework requirements. The first requirement is 12 semester credit hours in graduate level nutrition courses. There are some examples that are listed here, but this is going to vary by school. So these all need to be graduate level. It might include things like development nutrition, metabolism, metabolism of vitamins and minerals, nutrition assessment, and therapeutic nutrition. Next, we require six semester credit hours of biochemistry courses. These might include biochemistry of nutrition, advanced biochemistry, medical biochemistry, or clinical biochemistry, based on what school you attended. And then we require three semester credit hours of anatomy and physiology. Again, these courses might differ based on your school. Both of these can also be undergraduate or graduate level. The next requirement is 12 semester credit hours of clinical or life science. These can be graduate or undergraduate level and might include things like biology, botany, microbiology, nutrition science, organic or inorganic chemistry. And the final requirement is behavioral science. If you're taking the exam in June 2023 or after, so that would be anyone moving forward that's not taking the exam this December, you will have three credit hours required in this category. And this might include things like motivational interviewing, psychology, and sociology. All of the application materials are submitted through your portal. There is a portal video on the website. If you're unable to find it, please let me know. All of the documents and applications can be found at the website listed here. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out.